route. I want to just give you a little impression of the, you know, what we really have apart from exascalar. So we talked about exascalar or as we market it, A3i for our AI audiences. Um, and as hopefully we've proven to you, it's got some nice core um, architecture for a good fit into this space. And we have not covered huge amounts of detail about technical features and about how we manage multi-epoch training and all kinds of stuff. So that'll have to save itself for, for the beers. Um, but we did, uh, Kurt did show this slide to start with, and I want to just unwrap it a little bit. We mentioned Tintry, um, a special uh, system for managing virtualized environments. Um, we also didn't really talk about public cloud very much. So just to be clear, even though we presented the hardware and the hardware's you know, attributes are very good in terms of performance, we also run Exascalar in public clouds. So on the marketplaces in AWS, Google, GCP, and Azure, you will see Exascalar. Uh, we also have Terraform scripts and we have customers running analytics and AI against those parallel file system platforms running in purely software defined mode. So even though we, you know, the majority of our sales are appliances, we do run entirely in software defined mode um, across those VMs in those public cloud instances. Then just skipping back again, bringing all these products into one picture, just one example, one kind of grand use case of how DDN can be used to apply for a complete solution. Um, we've talked about A3i, obviously that's gonna serve the high throughput, high IOPS, high metadata, high pressure IO intensive stuff that of which AI is one thing. IntelliFlash um, is decent performance, but it's real um, raison d'etre is to serve a wide variety of core IT use cases. So it will support um, SMB, it'll support NFS, it'll provide fiber channel, it'll provide iSCSI, it'll support VMware environments, um, it'll support other virtualized environments, it's got strong container support, it'll support Kubernetes through file and block. So it's a very nice complement to build an entire infrastructure alongside A3i. And as we mentioned, it'll also dedupe and compress and basically make cost effective um, some live archives. Then wrapping around that as DDN data flow, um, which can be used for different purposes. Um, for here, we're seeing a nice little UI showing you how we use it to migrate data off competing systems onto DDN. Um, and it could be a wide variety. So it works with third party systems. It'll push data from the cloud into the cloud, from third party systems into DDN, et cetera. And it'll also do some nice things. So apart from just migration, it'll perform archival, it'll perform uh, backup operations, it'll sync two file systems together. And as you can see in this picture here, it'll also perform some analysis of your data contents and present it back to you for a bit more of an advanced view of really what's going on at the data layer. Then I just want to go a little bit more on IntelliFlash because we did some work recently, as I say, it's a unified storage, so multiple protocols, um, not the same performance as Exascalar, but still pretty strong. Um, we're getting to 20, 40 gigabytes a second in a, in a 2U platform and expanding to five petabytes in one namespace, decent. Um, but it supports these other use cases, which are all essentially, gen generally speaking, they all, they all feature somewhere in the AI ecosystem. Typically there's containers, typically there's, there's virtual machines, there may be databases, et cetera. And just to give you a little view about what that looks like uh, here, we were doing some work um, after NVIDIA had published um, a, a methodology, a collaboration with VMware to help them, um, you know, to help enterprises who are VMware customers move more easily into the AI space, maybe without having to deal with the complexities or the newness of containers. And so we did do some tests quite recently um, just to work out how we can fit with IntelliFlash and Exascalar to you know, basically support this, what NVIDIA call NVIDIA AI enterprise. Um, so we have got a video here, but we'll share it later on uh, because we don't want to spend too much time, but I'll show you a little, little clip here. So imagine if you're running IntelliFlash, typically IntelliFlash is going to support A, the virtual machines in this case, it could be containers by the way, but the virtual machines. Um, and we can set up this system here such that we create a pool of data specifically for the virtualized environment, supporting the VMDKs, the virtual machines on which these AI frameworks are running. And then secondly, 
I'm just skipping back in this video a bit. We can create different tabs in here and formulate them around different pools. So in here, if you look across the top there, you can just about see there's data store statistics. So that's essentially the, 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 the part of the storage that's supporting the virtualized environment. Then we'll skip forward a little bit. We'll do the same thing and we'll create a new pool. Um, but in this case, we're using NFS and SMB. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to provide a workspace. And you might well want to use NFS or SMB um, for... Uh, things like uh, parameter um, files or for the uh, executables around your AI frameworks, something which you can access easily for Windows machines, etc. And in this case, uh, we're using IntelliFlash in that environment. And at the top here, you can see we can monitor um, both the IO activity associated with uh, the virtual machines uh, and separately with the data store from a single appliance of as small as, as 2U. So I just wanted to jump there quickly to give you a bit of excitement before we finished with some fancy, uh, fancy GUI stuff. Um, but um, really what we want to say is, you know, combining these things together, we provide a, provide a whole, whole solution. Final slide. Um, I think maybe this resonates with uh, some of the questions we had earlier on. So why do organizations choose DDN? Uh, I think you know, William stole my thunder here. Um, Rumble One, what we're well known for and all our heritage really is in high performance IO, high performance data, big data, um, anything where the IO challenges become large, tough. And our parallel file system architecture really has, you know, developed over many years to deal with the challenges of performance, especially performance when things get very scalable. Secondly, as William said, all we do is storage and data at scale from data flow, IntelliFlash, VM store, Exascaler, A3i. It's all in the realm of data, data at scale and storage. We're quite unique in that, um, in that aspect of the sort of company we are, 100% focusing on the sort of things customers do around data. And then finally, it's ex execution and expertise. In fact, um, NVIDIA themselves said the main reason, or one of the main reasons they chose DDN was because our ability to really move with the systems and integrate very, very fast. Um, so.